Hi, how you doing? It's Jeff Sinker from SkypeGuitarLessonsOnline.com bringing you another video lesson in the Guitar Pro 7 series. Now, I was asked this week if I could put together a sheet for one of my students who's just started to learn how to play 12-bar blues. So I thought, let's do two things at once. I will show you how to start editing in Guitar Pro 7 and at the same time, produce this file for my student. So first thing we've got to do, we've got to set up a little uh, uh, file here. So I'm going to go to File and then New. Window pops up, Stringed Instrument. And uh, we've got Electric Guitar I'm going to choose. And I'm going to put it clean so not too much distortion coming through on that. So selected the instrument, selected the sound that I want. So I'm going to click Create. And I have got my track down here created. Now the song itself is 12 bar in A. So what we're going to do, um, we are going to first of all select this note here. Because I want to be playing it across an eighth note feel. So I'm going to be playing one and two and three and four and one. So being in A, the key of A, we're also going to be setting up the key. So uh, what I'll do, I'll do that after I've put this on so you can see the effect. So because we're playing in A, the first note that we're going to actually click on, uh, because we're going to go to the tablature here, will be on the fifth fret, which is the A note on the low E string. And playing at five chords, I also want to select seventh fret. Now that there would give me my opening A5 chord. And what I want to do is to show you a quick way because pretty much doing 12 bar blues, it doesn't change an awful lot. All that's going to be happening is the little finger is going to go down onto nine frets. So what we can do, I can just select and copy. Deselect it. And then I'm going to use my right arrow key to move across and then do control V. I'm going to keep doing that. Oh, stepped over too quickly there. So it's Control V. And I have fully populated the actual bar there. I'm going to take this one out here. I don't want that confusing things. So I'll take that bar out. Now I want him to put his uh, little finger down on the 9 fret on the 2 count. So what I'm going to do is just going to change that to 9 and change on the 8 count to 9. And all I've done, I've just used the keyboard to do that. When I'm selecting the numbers, once I've decided what string it'll be on, I just use the keypad to actually put on the notes that I'm wanting to play. Uh, so, now I've done that, what I would like to do, if I go back to the main screen here, I am going to actually uh, name that chord. So what I'm going to do is select any note in there and I'm going to click on the A key and it brings up my chord menu. Now it's an A5 so I'm happy with that so I'm just going to click OK and it's named that as an A5. Now because being 12 bar blues, very standard 12 bar blues, the first section is four bars of the same so I'm just going to select using holding down my left mouse key and just selecting that whole bar and then I'm going to click copy. Go into the next bar and I'm going to do paste special because what I want it to do is to actually repeat that three times. So now I've got my four bar. I didn't want it to put the chord every single time. They didn't, there was no point in doing that. I only like to change the chord when we have actually changed specifically in there. So if you've got four bars of the same thing, there's no point changing anything. Now, what we're going to do is we've got the screen up there. I am going to now do the next section. So I don't have to change the actual note selection, the actual beat. So I'm now going to go across here because it's now going to move up to the D5. So it's going to be five and nine. 
and I am going to do the same thing again. I'm going to select and copy, and then I'm going to use Control V again to fill that bar up. And I am just going to change that to, oh, I made a mistake. It should be seven. So I can just go back there and re edit it. That's correct there. Seven, seven, nine. And I will do the same thing again. I am going to just select. Ah, before that, I am going to actually do the. Bring it up and name it as D5 code. So I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to do copy. Some people probably just think it's easy just to print it out. I, I'm a bit old fashioned when it comes to that. I just like copy and paste. So I've got two bars of D5. Uh, the next bar goes back to A5. So again, not rocket size. I'm just going to select and copy this. Go on to here and paste special and it's two bars and I will go to the A and A5 so I've got four bars of the A5 two bars of the D5 and two bars of the A5 so let's go to our next bar so I'm just going to step into the next one now this is where it moves up to the five chord so I am going to be playing seven and nine. And we're going to copy and paste this. Copy. And move to the next. Control V, Control V, Control V. And I will change that. So I have got the bar there. Let's go back to the first one. Type in, click in A and it's the E5. And because it's going to the D5 chord, I'm just going to do it again, a select and copy. And paste that in to the bar. So I'm going to do a paste special this time. Uh, but this time I'm going to click chord. It's done two, so I'm not happy with that. So what I can do, I can just click out of that and display. And click the A, and I want to display the name. No, click out. That's not going to do it for me. So. The next part is going to a D5 chord. Uh, so all I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this D5 here. Go into the bar. Click on paste. And I just want to name it, so I put the chord. And I do OK. And we know the next bar, the standard 12 bar, is going to go to an A5. So I'm just going to copy that. Paste. And I will put, put up that window and put the chord in. And the final bar is an E5. Now again, I'm just going to copy this and then I'll edit it. So copy and paste. Click on there, bring up the chord window again. And all I'm going to do, because I just wanted to just play down strokes. On the E5, I don't want to play anything with the little finger on that. So what we've got there is the 12 bars. I've got the chords at the top there as well. I'm not too sure why they're not showing the chords there. In fact, I'm not really happy with that. So we're going to change that. I'm going to take them out, which is going back to a previous lesson about tidying up a file. But I've done all the editing. Now, of course, not everything that you do is this easy. 
But I just uh, just wanted to show you how simple it is to enter information on here. There are different things that I could have done with this. I could have taken that whole bar then, because it repeats itself, I could have done this. Which well, just means play the same bar as what you played previous. And of course, I could do the same here. And on the A5, show that, and then just play. Click on that. So I could have done that. I just doesn't have the same visual effect for me. So I'm just gonna click back and just put it back the way it was. Okay. Magic of just using the uh, the keyboard here. Right. What we're gonna do is just tidy this up, as I'm not happy with the layout what I've got there so far. I've got to. Uh, sharp showing in here so what i'm going to do i'm going to go and i'm going to change the, i'm going to change it to the correct key signature which is a that's got rid of that uh let's name it so i'm going to go across here to the track and song information section so i'm in the song here and i'm going to just name it 12 bar blues Lesson and by me. Okay, not that I can really claim anything to that, but it just makes it a little bit more uh, defined. Now, I, I said I don't like these little chords here, especially when it's just five chords. There's no real point in doing that. So, we're going to change that through the style sheet. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to bring in the star sheet section. It opens up this nice little window here. And it's all the information about chords. Now I just want the classic. Uh, do I want them on the top of the score? No, I don't. So I click visible off and apply. And when I click OK, I've now lost them. All I've got is just the A5, the D5 across there. Um, the other thing about 12 bar blues, remember, it just repeats itself. So what I could actually do, I could click on this window. I could click on that icon there. And that would put a repeat bar at the beginning. I go back to here and I go to the end of the session and I click on the repeat close. It's going to ask me how many times. Well, 12 bar blues. It could go on forever, couldn't it? But I'm just going to put on two. Because uh, it's just going to go back and repeat itself. So I don't want to make it just lots of information just for no reason whatsoever. So that's looking a little bit better now. Um, I haven't really done any dynamic information on there. It's, it's, at this stage, it doesn't really need it. What I mean by dynamics, I'm just uh, what level uh, should he play the song at? Should he play it loud or quiet? Doesn't really kind of warrant it at the moment, but uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is here. I think we, we covered uh, enough on that. Um, you see, very simple method for adding information. If I wanted to do some build-up, so I just wanted to uh, tell them that I wanted to play a certain bar louder than others, I could have used these little bits here. I could have said, okay, on this last bar here, I want you to build up to bit of a start off quite, you know, just build that ready for the return. So I could click that in, just to add in some more information on there. Um, I was asked by the student if I could put the, the finger in that he would use on that. So let me just show you how you can do that. I I don't think this is really useful, uh, but I just, I'll, I'll, I'll show you anyway. So you go to note and you're looking for left hand fingering. So unless you're left hand, of course, but left hand is part of the fretboard. And the fifth is using first finger. I go to the seventh and that will be using the third finger. 
I don't do it for every single note, so I'm just going to do it where it changes. So it's going to change on beat two. So I click on that, click on the nine, and that's four finger. And of course, then it's going to go back here to one and three. And let me just zoom in here so you can see this. It's written at the side of the notes. And that's why I'm, I'm not a huge fan of using this. Uh, it's like my eyesight. You have to be really squinting in close to see what's going on there. So I don't tend to use that. But that's how you would do it. Uh, myself, I just kind of write the information down for my student. But if you did want to indicate that, if there was a bigger chord, that's how you could do it. But it's, it's a five chord. So... But that's it, you would just click on that uh, file there that says uh, note, and that would bring this up here. And uh, here we have it there, you click on the notes, and go down to the left hand finger, it brings up that window. Uh, if you wanted to put the information for the right hand finger in, you click on that, it changes, and you've got that information there. So, but I'm gonna take that out, I don't tend to use that. So we're back to the way we were on that. Now, it isn't titled at the moment, so I do have to save it as a file. Uh, I've given the information that is just purely for the sheet. But uh, it doesn't actually have a file, so I just remember to save this. So I'll save this. And uh, I'm just going to call it, as I've already one down here 12 bar blues lesson i'll click save and now it is saved so i'm not going to lose this information whatsoever if i did want to change the time uh, it's 120 beats a minute i can i can just click on here and i could slow it down just turn it into a little slow blues make it 100 I click apply, so change the timing on that if I wanted to do that. So, uh, but the information I've got there pretty much kind of works for that. So let's just have a quick listen to it. So uh, uh, after all our efforts, let's just see how it sounds. <laughs> standard 12 bar blues I could if I wanted to have a little bit of fun with the track and change the sounds and I said we had it as a clean guitar so I go across to this section here and uh, I can bring in uh, as long as you can see that I have information there you go to electric guitar overdrive guitar uh, you can't see it just because of where the picture of the screen is so I'm just going to say blues so I have a blues guitar here so let's all listen to see what this sounds like. Well, I hope this kind of helps you out. You're just getting your hands first on. Um, if you, well, uh, as an introduction, I hope this does help you. You just saw how I went through things. Remember that paste and click, copy and paste. I say, it, it's just you know. It, think about this as a word processor for music. So when you've got certain information, you don't have to keep writing it down. You know, you're not reinvented the wheel. So if you've got something that you know repeats, use it. Don't you know, keep entering data one after the other. It's, uh, if I was watching somebody doing that, I'd find that very tiresome. Uh, same as you probably would if you was using Word or Google Docs. Just use the mouse, use the actual copy and paste function whenever you can to speed up what you're doing. Anyway, I am going to let you go. I've got to get this off to my student. Uh, I will be back again soon with some more tips and advice on using Guitar Pro 7. 
So any questions you might have, just please let me know. And again, remember, this is based at, for, the, for the beginner just getting into this. I've, I've seen some of these lessons here on YouTube uh, where you're transcribing. And I think most beginners will be just blown away with what they're doing because it just is so advanced. There are, some people are extremely good at doing this, but they do forget that your average person that started using Guitar Pro or started putting data together, creating their own tab files, it's just going to be totally lost. So I'm just going to try and do it bit by bit just to get you up and running and then you can start to experiment yourself. Well, that's me. I've finished. Got to go. I will speak to you again soon. So until the next lesson, it's Jeff Sinker, SkypeGuitarLessonsOnline.com. Wishing you well. Look forward to seeing you all again soon. Goodbye.